हेलो ओला नमस्ते आई एम रूपाली एंड वेलकम टू क्राइम हैक आई एम सॉरी आई हैवेंट बीन एबल टू पोस्ट एनी न्यू वीडियोस रिसेंटली बट लॉकडाउन हैज बीन डिफिकल्ट फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल इंक्लूडिंग मी बट नाउ आई एम बैक एंड नाउ आई बी एबल टू पुट आउट न्यू वीडियोस विद रेगुलर पेस one of you had requested me to do the review of uh, one of the videos of overly sarcastic productions miscellaneous myths kali tries to kill everything thank you for giving me the opportunity to watch this video not only did i like it a lot but also i think that i can express the concepts and the story a little bit better one of my trevor noah videos have been deleted i have got one strike on my channel so i am not going to put uh, the video inside my video but i am going to review it so please forgive me for that better still this video will be there on my patreon account in exactly the way it should be let's begin this video portrays kali as even more dangerous and even more scarier than that movie had done <laughs> Who would have ever guessed that this wasn't a fully accurate portrayal of Hindu worship? Now let me tell you about the myth of Kali, the story of Kali and what exactly Kali represents and what she stands for. What exactly she is. There is a lot of confusion in this video and uh, I'm going to blow your mind when I tell you about her. The video begins with a clip of a movie Temple of Doom where there's a bunch of Indians they are uh, worshiping Kali and trying to, you know, sacrifice a few humans. I know how scared the westerners would have been upon seeing this. I was So why wouldn't you? <laughs> Then she goes on to say that Hinduism is the oldest religion in the world, which is true. But uh, a lot of people, a lot of Hindus think that Hinduism is not a religion; it is a way of life. So that is a little bit different. Some experts also believe that Mayan and Incan civilizations were also Hindus who had gone abroad and settled there. Controversial, but still there are some parallels worth looking into. They call this video concise, entertaining intro paragraph, but they have got a lot of things right. However, the four-minute video flies past very fast without offering any insights. And since you have requested my views on this video, here are some insights for you. As she puts it correctly, Hinduism is all about how to best live your life while simultaneously finding ways to escape samsara, the cycle of reincarnation. True, Hinduism is just a way of life. But it is easy to think that it is all about idol worship, rituals, or sacred scripts. No, it is more than that. It is a way of life that is strongly based on hardcore science, unlike the common belief. Stick with my channel, and you will learn and benefit a lot. I am not trying to convert you because there is no way to convert into a way of life. For example, you should look left and right before crossing a road. That is way of life. You don't have to change your religion in order to accept that in your daily life. It will just keep you safe and healthy and happy. She also talks about Maya, a confusing concept, and also the Brahman, which in her words is the ultimate sort of universal thing, which is really hard to concisely define without sounding like a hippie or a cult leader. But it's kind of a unifying principle energy thing of the universe. Let me simplify these terms for you and I'll start with maya. Maya means illusion like your pension. I mean I don't know who all in your individual countries get pension but according to rich dad poor dad Robert Kiyosaki we all believe our whole lives that there is pension at the end of the road but when we reach the end of the road poof Similarly according to the concept of maya we believe our whole lives that we are so and so that is our name we belong to so and so country so and so community we have so and so money possessions relations battles enemies but at the end of the road poof oh my god where's my body where's my money where's my mansion where are my friends my family my country So all these things are illusions maya now hindus believe in reincarnation and science or various streams of it are slowly catching up to the concept i'll be sharing a few links down below if you're interested now why do we want to skip the cycle of reincarnation and achieve nirvana well imagine yourself being at a job for 36000 years 
that's how many lives you have to take before you take on the human form so what do you become before you become a human anything between a maggot to a dinosaur or fish to a bird even plants and trees you want to take on human form quickly better choose a life form with a shorter life span and if you want to skip this unending cycle you got to make the most out of your human life that's where this way of life comes into the picture how best to live your human life in order to escape the cycle that's why killing a human is such a big sin because the soul that you just killed had to live through 36000 lives and deaths before becoming this person now what's brahman it's complicated though it all goes over my head but in very simple layman terms it's the thing that everything is made up of like you would know everything is made up of cells but cells themselves are also made up of some things right when you go deeper than the cell level you will find that the cell itself is made up of matter and space scientists call it dark matter and dark space we indians call it consciousness and brahman again if you are interested i am going to put some links in the description below then she talks about shakti which is specifically a feminine primordial cosmic energy thing that seems to play the same role as brahman does i know confusing well shakti means power but it also means femininity now it's easy to confuse it with the idol of femininity that is women but it is more like a concept rather than a physical thing just like the idol worship in hinduism isn't about the idol at all it's more about the concept the power the characteristics that we are worshiping let me explain hinduism isn't about idol worshiping unlike the common belief let's say if i were to tell you that god does not have any physical shape size color or you know texture smell or touch it would be difficult for you to comprehend the concept many people find it difficult to comprehend intangible things forget about putting faith in it but faith itself is very important so here this is god focus on its energy its representation what it stands for and its power then faith will give you the power and because we don't listen to objects or even animals or birds or anything reptiles that's why give it a face of human because we can understand humans very well we can comprehend humans very well and we can draw motivation and inspiration from humans very well so to simplify things idols were created to give people something to focus on that's why we have so many gods just create an image in our mind call it god sachin tendulkar the cricket maestro is called the god of cricket so why do you call someone a god and worship them just so you can learn from them walk their path strive to be as good as them gain faith and then benefit from the power that faith gives you if bill gates and warren buffett were indians they would have been called uh, gods of business and investment why because they are the best in their field they set a very high standard they have their own professions roles and responsibilities and yet they excel at what they do people can also learn from them and if someone worships them enough these gods can share exclusive wisdom with them still they would just be physical representations the idols of this ideology this concept this power this learning that one can gain from them similarly in hinduism too the idols themselves are just a representation of what the god stands for what it represents its energy its ideology its characteristics and what is there to learn or gain from that god like lord rama he is called the maryada purushottam now i am not going to explain what it means maybe in a different video i will but right now what i want to point out is that rama's story though interesting he is only revered for what he could teach us how to behave in life there are a lot of lessons to learn from his entire life and the way he has reacted to various different situations and it is only for those qualities for which he is worshiped as a god so it's easy to get sidetracked by the stories of these gods what is more important is that their stories remain their learnings remain 
another example is indra indra is called the king of gods who has the power to control weather he had mastered the science and art of controlling weather it's like starting to call intel as a god a god that resides within everything but if you come to think of it very soon artificial intelligence is going to put mind and soul inside machines which is non living things and in order to compete with ai humans are going to be implanted with machinery chips and all with all the software and hardware and everything so living as well as non living things will have intel inside so drawing a parallel hindus also think that god resides within everything living as well as non living same concept just a little advanced than the current science so shakti though looks like a goddess it actually represents the power of feminine qualities hinduism believes that there is always a balance between feminine and masculine qualities in each and everything even within every individual so while earning a living may be a masculine job but money itself is feminine it is elusive shy mesmerizing attractive learning is also a feminine quality because you can't bring your ego in if you want to learn something you must bow down before your teacher and show patience perseverance and determination to learn also when you care for someone like actually take care of someone or something like a garden a company a person that is the feminine quality inside of you you like to look good that is another feminine quality but you get angry you have ego you throw your weight around you bully someone that is masculine quality and irrespective of whether you are a male or a female you will have all these qualities inside of you and hinduism says that there must always be a balance between these two types of energies inside of you or inside of anything at all if the balance is off you fail as a human being you fail as a animal or a bird you even fail as a planet you see the weather the mother earth they have nourishing qualities as well as destructive qualities if this balance becomes off it leads to catastrophe so that's what we mean when we say that shakti is the feminine primordial cosmic energy thing which plays an equivalent role in the brahman as shiva which is the masculine brute force moving on she says that every god is an aspect of the primordial energy universe thing and then most gods are specific aspects of the bigger gods so yes brahman is the basic component of everything below that come gods three main gods brahma the creator vishnu the nourisher and shiva the destroyer and this cycle must go on in the universe creation nourishment destruction and then creation again and below these three main gods come secondary gods tertiary gods who are specific gods about specific things just like original equipment manufacturers they are the gods or the experts of the designs of the cars or other stuff their suppliers are experts or gods of the components that make up the car and then there is a next level of suppliers who are masters or gods of smaller specific things something like that now the narrator seemed confused about shakti parvati durga and kali she says that parvati is the gentle nourishing motherly aspect of shakti durga is the warrior aspect of parvati and kali is the pissed off version of durga in a way she is right but i still think that she is a little bit confused or maybe the way that she is expressing things makes the audience confused but the most important confusion in her narration was that parvati being the wife of shiva and yet kali being also called the wife of shiva while parvati is around so let me explain this conflict well as mentioned before shakti is power just a concept not an individual and parvati durga and kali these are all the same person to explain this a bit let us consider you as a person how do you define yourself do you have power within you which can be seen by someone at some point in your life that is shakti do you love someone take care of someone at some part in your life that is parvati aspect of you if someone threatens your family your community your country do you pick up a fight that is the warrior aspect of you so these are not reincarnations or you know different versions of you but these are the same person with different characteristics different aspects and do you get angry once in a while that is the pissed off version of you kali 
Now that we have established that these are all the same person, now let me tell you the twist. Parvati, she has achieved the spiritual level where she can separate all these distinct aspects into different physical forms. I have explained a little bit about this in my meditation video. Please check that video out as well. So that is why she is called as Goddess. Because she has become an expert, she has set a very high standard and blah 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 of everything that defines a god or a goddess. The video now turns its attention to Kali and how she nearly danced the entire universe to death. Well, there are multiple variations to the story, but the generally accepted version is that there were these three super powerful villains, Chanda Munda and Raktabija, who were harassing gods and humans alike. So Parvati is approached by all to save them from these Rakshasas. That's another concept. I will explain it in this video itself. So she takes on this warrior form of Durga, riding a lion and marches into the villainous army with her band of warriors called Matrikas. Now these villains are called Asurs. What are Asurs? Let me explain. Sur means in tune with the righteous way of life and a Sur means not in tune with the righteous way of life. Now everyone has the power to become masters of something or the other. What decides whether you are Sur or Asur is your intention of using that power, that knowledge, whether you are using it for the benefit of others or whether you are using it to harm others or oppress others. So this villainous army is of a source that is who are not in tune with the righteous way, who are trying to suppress and oppress other people using their knowledge and power. Now one of the main super powerful villains of this Asur army is Rakta Bija. Rakta means blood and Bija means seed. So he has achieved this expertise, this power that wherever a drop of his blood touches the ground, another version of him pops up. That is the power of cloning for you. The expertise of human cloning through every drop of blood. So this guy Rakta Bija has also achieved godlike status but he is an Asur or Rakshasa, same thing, because he is using his knowledge and power, expertise to harm others. Whereas gods or Surs, they use their knowledge and power to help others. In simple terms, gods or Devas are our very own Avengers, but Rakta Bija is turning out to be the end game. Terrorists are also a type of Rakta Bija. You kill one and hundreds of others will come up. Scammers are the same. Even consumerism and capitalism is also the same. You buy one thing and hundred other things will pop up in the market demanding your attention and your money. Anywho, to battle the end game, a specialist is called in. Goddess Durga. She fights and fights and fights but there comes a time when she gets really frustrated. Frustrated with the continuous replenishment of Raktabija's clones. She puts her foot down and says, that's it. She gets so pissed off that Kali spontaneously manifests out of the creases of her forehead and starts wreaking havoc on the villainous army. To counter Rakta Bija's cloning technology, she gobbles up all his clones and then cuts off his head and juices him like an orange. So no more blood, no more clones and he dies permanently. The battle is thus over and the Avengers have won but Kali doesn't chill out. She's still in the heat of the moment slashing and hacking her way through everything and anything that is coming in front of her. Just like when we are really angry, no matter whether the person in front of us is uh, innocent or guilty, we become angry at that person as well. We spew fire at that person as well. Similarly, Kali is like really pissed off and her murder spree gets so intense that it starts threatening the entire universe. So Shiva is called upon to control and stop his wife. He's wise. He knows that only love can overcome and pacify extreme rage. So he lays down in her path without a word. Because reasoning, talking, convincing never works with an enraged person, does it? So Kali doing her victory dance and murder spree comes stomping on the ground and being blinded by rage stamps a foot on Shiva and immediately realizes her mistake and sticks her tongue out. Like, oh, what have I done? And that is when she stops. That's why you always see Kali with her tongue sticking out. 
There is a saying in India which says that don't invoke Kali inside a woman. If you do, you will play with fire. You see, Kali is like Hulk, Lady Hulk. Hulk, when he quiets down, doesn't remain Hulk anymore, does he? Same is with Kali. Now, Kali is worshipped in many parts of India, not only because she is a specialist, but also because she is hulking out for the benefit of others, to save others from an oppressor. Now, mind you, Shiva and Parvati were not king and queen. In fact, Shiva and Parvati were recluses, lived far away from the society, up in the hills, the Himalayas. And when even Durga couldn't handle the problem, she dug her heels deep and invoked Kali, the fiercest form of rage in order to end the problem once and for all. That's mind-blowing control over that kind of sheer power. And doing all this for the benefit of others without expecting anything in return? That's what commands admiration. That's what makes her a goddess. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have questions or thoughts or requests, I would like to hear them in the comments section below. And don't forget to share this interesting tidbit with others. Do check out my other videos too and subscribe to my channel for such mind-blowing revelations every now and then. Until the next video, Namaste.